Alright guys, Will here from ZaltechReviews.com uh, Today I'm taking a look at the Gavox Longitude GMT I've uh, been after this watch for quite a while uh, Long story short, fantastic watch However, there is one major problem with it And I'll talk about that later in the video Play the intro <laughs> Right guys, before I get into details of the watch, I'll quickly show you the packaging. The watch itself comes in this sort of pine box with this leather type fastening thing there. Right, undo that. Inside, quite, you, um, you've got all the logos and stuff on the box itself. Uh, that's, that's all your instruction manual and warranty details and that. You also get these extension things to turn it from an integrated bracelet to standard 20 mil opening quite unusual then you have your usual um foam insert nap for the watch spare links in there yada 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 right price of these are you sitting down? One thousand two hundred and fifty euros. Rather expensive, which uh, off the top of my head, um, it's about what just over a thousand pound. I'll put the exact exchange rate on the screen to give you a better idea. Right then, the specifications of these dimensions, case diameter. These are my own measurements, by the way. Case diameter 39.4 mil, a total thickness of 12.5 mil, lug to lug 46.8 mil. The lug width is not applicable, but you do have those 20 mil extension things. Personally, I wouldn't bother with them unless you were really wanting to put a strap on this watch. Personally, I mean, the bracelet is really nice, so I would just keep it on the bracelet. Uh, the total weight is 156 grams. That's uh, with the bracelet sized up for my six and three quarter inch wrist. The movement inside it is a slightly customised Miyota 9075 True GMT movement. 28,800 vibrations an hour. 4 hertz, obviously, a uh, nice smooth sweep, hackable, self-winding with a 42 hour power reserve. Now, the case is brushed and polished 316L stainless steel and it also has a 1200 hardness coating, that's a uh, hardness rating on the Vickers scale and it's on the hardness coating is on the case and the bracelet, as well as the bezel, well, the whole watch, really, right? Uh, let me show you the case. It's quite an angular case, as you can see. The quality of this is exceptional. Really, really good build quality. Really good finishing. You can see there, uh, it's, you've got this quite a, an angular type aesthetic to it with these polished, I mean, they call it a chamfered edge, I call it a cutout, but it's that's polished. I mean, you've got brushing pretty much everywhere, and these polished cutouts as I said and it continues 
right along the bracelet as well, along the top. Uh, the mid links are polished as well, outer links are brushed, and it continues that kind of angular design right throughout the bracelet. And you might be thinking, oh, polished center links? Nah, because that was my initial thoughts. But I've been wearing this watch quite a lot, and there's no scratches on it, because obviously the hardness coating is a great idea, especially when you've got polished center links. Uh, but look at when you've got the watch on wrist and you look at it top to bottom, it's more like a light show rather than you know out and out bling. Get my meaning. Um, no drilled logs or anything like that, but you don't need it. There is quick release pins on the bracelet if you want to take the thing off and put those extensions on. No, but as I say, I would rather keep the bracelet. The bracelet is uh, has screw pins for sizing. Solid links throughout, obviously. Fully milled clasp. Really nice. Uh, four levels in micro adjust. Uh, no quick release, which is a bit disappointing at this price point. But it's still a really nice clasp. It's a nice size. It's not chunky. Uh, it does suit um, the watch overall. Um, with the amount of polishing that's on the watch itself, I kind of thought they would have continued to polish on that chamfered edge. It's just a small niggle, but I think that would give it, that would give it, um, you know, it would just continue the, the theme, the aesthetic. Don't know why they've never done that. Obviously signed, uh, double push button release. It is very nice, no question. Uh, I might put the watch back down. Focus. Um, right, done all that, done the bracelet. Uh, right, the bezel. Stainless steel job, and it has a hardness coating. It's got a loom pip, and it's a 24 click bi-directional, and the bezel action is really smooth. And I've got absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. It does line up. We got that black enamel uh, arabics and hour markers right round uh, really nice bezel no complaints flat sapphire with plenty of AR coating does a great job I don't have any issues with that really I mean this watch right before I tell you what's, what I think's wrong with it, I'm just going to say this watch is excellent. I don't have any issues with it apart from one that I'll go on to later on. I'll go. I'll continue with the, the specs. I've done that, done that. Right, the dial. It has like a, a water texture to it. Be quite, it's quite hard to show on this white one. In fact, does this one even have it? This white one. You know what? I even I don't think. I mean, my eyes. Are, oh, there you can see it. There you can see it there. It's got like that wavy water texture. It's a lot easier to see on the other colorways. Talking of the other colourways, hang on, I'll just bring it up. You have this one, which they call the Peril, 
and it's white, it's not silver, it's pure white, love it. You know what I'm like with white watches. You also have uh, a blue, it's, kind of, it's a darker blue, they call it sapphire blue. Uh, you also have a light blue, well it's turquoise really. Uh, and there's also a, a black dial version of this as well, and that's your whack. So you have bl black, white, blue, and the, the sort of turquoise colour. Right, back to where I was. Right, oh, I... I've not finished on the dial, have I? Right, you've got applied markers all round. Uh, Batten shape markers right round the dial. A wee stubby one there at six with the date above it. All the colourways of this watch have a colour match date wheel, which is a big thumbs up from me. You have that kind of V-shaped marker at 12. Uh, you've got Gavox printed above the pinion. And below the pinion you have GMT automatic and the water resistance and the water resistance is 200 meters which is good no complaints the lumo on this is Swiss super luminova BGW9 and as you can see here from my b-roll footage the loom is pretty good it's more it's no really I, like dive watch level but I mean even though it's got 200 metres of water resistance you're gonna you're not gonna take this diving I mean, the deepest I go is the bath uh, case back the case back is screwed down yeah you can see this kind of customization that's on the movement really nice uh, that's sapphire crystal by the way uh, basic specs on the edge screw down blah 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 so sapphire sandwich all good and you'd expect that at this price point uh, the crown 6mm screw down and signed just show you that quickly Got that G logo. It's all very nice. Nice smooth action as well when you're using it. Uh, you can buy these right now. All colourways are available. And the watch has a two year warranty. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably wondering, right, what's wrong with it? Well, biggest problem for me, right, before I tell you, right, this watch is excellent. Right, I love the white dial, I love all the other colourways as well, I think it's a fantastic watch. Great choice of movement, everything, they've done the bezel correctly, they've done everything correctly. Biggest problem I've got is the price, €1,250, that's way too expensive. If you put that into pounds, you're looking at the exact same price or pretty much you know, give or take a few quid. The same price as the Christopher Board C63 Sealander GMT. Now, everybody knows I love that watch. Um, and it has the Salita SW330-2 movement. 56 hour power is there. It's just a step up for this. But Gavox want the exact same money. Um no, I'm sorry, but if you put this next to the Christopher Ward, I'm sorry, but I'd pick the Christopher Ward all day long. This needs to be cheaper to be relevant, in my opinion. I reckon it should it should definitely be under a thousand euros, and that's me giving it. I mean. What's the other Miyota 9075 GMTs that I've seen? The Trasker uh, 
Venture or GMT that has the same movement and that's what seven hundred dollars or something like that or I can't remember off the top of my head but it's way cheaper than this and that's a fantastic watch. Um I can't think of I have reviewed other ones but I'll I, I can't remember because I've not got it in front of me. But I'll list them on the screen if I remember what other ones that I've done with the same movement. And I guarantee you, um, oh, aye, the Zelos uh, Mako GMT. No, I wasn't really a fan of that uh, because it was stupidly thick, but it was way cheaper than this. And that had a hardness coating on it, same movement, and it had a better clasp. <coughs> So that's my only problem, and if this was cheaper, I would I would definitely be giving this uh, one of my awards uh, because I do really like it. Um, but it's just too expensive for what it is. The price needs to come down. Uh, so that's basically it, guys. Oh, in fact, no, I'm not give you a wrist shot, have I? Hold on, and I'll just do that quickly. I'll take my glove off. So I can zoom in a, zoom out a wee bit. Aye, lovely watch by the way. Fits my wrist perfect. Great profile. Really nice. Really high quality. But it's just no worth the asking price in my opinion. Uh, right, so that's it guys. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. It really helps the channel. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles!